Picture this. Gleaming skyscrapers reflecting the desert sun. Ultra-modern cities rising like mirages and billions flowing from oil revenues. Saudi Arabia looks unstoppable, a kingdom of wealth, ambition, and vision. In 2021, the country launched the Saudi Green Initiative, a $50 billion plan to turn its vast, lifeless deserts into thriving forests. The goal was audacious. Billions of trees, millions of hectares restored, a greener future for one of the driest countries on Earth. But within months, something shocking happened. Millions of seedlings dried up, shriveled under the relentless heat, or were swallowed by raging sandstorms. The desert, that timeless, unyielding force, had pushed back. Despite money, technology, and national pride, Saudi Arabia's dream of a green desert collapsed almost overnight. How could a country with nearly unlimited resources fail against sand? And why did this failure lead them to an unexpected ally, China? This isn't just a story about trees. It's a tale of ambition, nature, and a gamble that could change an entire region. Saudi Arabia isn't just mostly desert. About 95% of the country is sand, rocky plains, and dunes. That makes it one of the most desertified nations on Earth, second only to Western Sahara. But desertification isn't a problem that stays within borders. When sand spreads, soil turns to dust, and water disappears, the effects ripple across the entire Middle East. Countries like Jordan, Iraq, Kuwait, and even parts of North Africa feel the consequences. Think of it like lighting a fire in the middle of a dry forest. Even if you try to control it, the flames spread fast. Similarly, sandstorms travel hundreds of kilometers, crops fail, and water scarcity increases across borders. The economic toll is staggering. Saudi Arabia alone loses roughly $113 billion each year to desertification. That includes destroyed farmland, buried infrastructure, and rising food costs. This isn't just a local environmental issue, it's a regional crisis. The health of Saudi Arabia's land affects the livelihoods, economies, and food security of millions of people across neighboring nations. And this is why greening the desert isn't just a luxury, it's a necessity. In 2016, Saudi Arabia launched Vision 2030, a bold plan to transform the kingdom's economy and society. The goal was simple, but ambitious reduce reliance on oil, diversify the economy, and prepare for a future where fossil fuels aren't king. But Vision 2030 wasn't just about money, it was also about image, innovation, and sustainability. A centerpiece of this vision was greening the desert, planting forests, restoring degraded land, and creating natural reserves became symbolic of Saudi Arabia's ambition. It wasn't just environmental pride, it was economic strategy and national identity. If successful, the initiative could cool the climate, protect food supplies, and even attract global recognition as a leader in climate action. In other words, greening the desert wasn't a side project, it was a national mission. Success would show the world that Saudi Arabia could combine wealth, technology, and environmental responsibility to tackle one of the toughest challenges on Earth, turning barren sand into life. But the next steps would prove far harder than anyone imagined. In 2021, Saudi Arabia officially rolled out the Saudi Green Initiative, one of the largest environmental projects the world had ever seen. The plan was staggering. Plant 10 billion trees, restore 40 million hectares of degraded land, and turn 30% of the country into protected natural reserves. The first phase alone aimed to plant 450 million trees across the kingdom. Billions of dollars were invested in nurseries, irrigation systems, and infrastructure to support this vision. Satellite mapping, land preparation, and scientific studies were all part of the rollout. The message was clear. Saudi Arabia wanted to prove it could fight climate change, reclaim its deserts, and reshape its future. The scale of the initiative was breathtaking. The stakes, enormous. A failure wouldn't just be an environmental setback, it would be a national embarrassment visible to the world. 
Every tree planted carried the weight of billions of dollars, years of planning, and the kingdom's global reputation. Yet despite all the resources and planning, nature had its own plans. Almost immediately, the Saudi Green Initiative ran into the harsh reality of the desert. Summer temperatures regularly soared above 43 degrees Celsius, baking the ground and scorching newly planted seedlings. The land itself, dry, rocky, and inhospitable, just refused to cooperate. Within days, many of the 450 million saplings wilted and died. Then came the winds. Powerful desert gusts tore through planting areas, uprooting young trees and burying others under layers of shifting sand. Even the kingdom's vast oil wealth couldn't solve the biggest problem, water scarcity. The project required massive, continuous irrigation, but local water reserves were just not enough to keep millions of trees alive. In just a few weeks, what had been years of preparation and billions of dollars in investment seemed to vanish. The dream of green forests turning the desert into life-supporting land was crushed. Saudi Arabia had learned a harsh lesson. Ambition and money alone cannot conquer nature. The desert had fought back and won. The collapse of the Saudi Green Initiative wasn't just a setback for the environment. It sent ripples across the economy and society. With forests failing to grow, farmland remained vulnerable to encroaching sand, making food production even more precarious. Saudi Arabia, already dependent on imports for much of its food, became more exposed to global supply shocks and rising prices. Infrastructure also suffered. Roads, pipelines, and buildings risked being buried or damaged by shifting sands, while water shortages worsened. The social impact was equally serious. Communities that had hoped for jobs in tree planting, land maintenance, and environmental projects saw opportunities vanish. This failure highlighted a stark reality. Desertification isn't just a local environmental problem. It's geopolitical, economic, and social. Millions of people depend on the land, and when it degrades, the consequences spread across borders and industries. Saudi Arabia's struggle made it clear, tackling desertification requires more than ambition and money. It demands expertise, technology, and strategy. Facing the failure of its ambitious green plan, Saudi Arabia confronted a choice, abandon the dream, or find the knowledge to make it work. That's when attention turned to an unexpected partner, China. Why China? Because for decades, China had been battling some of the harshest deserts on Earth, like the Gobi Desert, and succeeding. Through long-term planning, advanced techniques, and sheer scale, China transformed barren land into green belts, farmland, and thriving ecosystems. Unlike Saudi Arabia's initial attempt, China had proven methods to turn hostile sand into sustainable soil. For Saudi Arabia, the decision wasn't just about trees, it was a strategic gamble. Partnering with China offered expertise, technology, and experience that money alone couldn't buy. It was a bold move, showing that even the wealthiest nation sometimes needs to learn from the world's desert experts to succeed. This partnership would mark the turning point in the kingdom's green journey. In 2024, Saudi Arabia and China sealed a $50 billion strategic cooperation agreement, a massive commitment to turn failure into success. The goal was clear, bring China's advanced desert control technologies, expertise, and infrastructure to Saudi Arabia, and revive the 10 billion tree plan. This wasn't just about planting trees anymore. It was a science-driven, international effort. Chinese experts promised to help transform 30% of Saudi desertified land into green space by 2040. New irrigation systems, soil restoration techniques, and climate-adapted plant species would be implemented on an unprecedented scale. By joining forces, Saudi Arabia wasn't just importing technology. It was importing decades of experience and a proven blueprint for desert reclamation. For the first time, hope was back, this time grounded in strategy, science, and international collaboration rather than ambition alone. 
The stage was set for a dramatic transformation. The transformation began with cutting-edge Chinese technology, the kind that makes desert reclamation almost look like science fiction. At the heart of it was soilization, developed by Chinese scientist Yi Jian. This technique mixes sand with a special plant-based paste, creating a material that behaves like fertile soil. It holds water, grips roots, and allows vegetation to thrive in places that were once lifeless. But soilization was just one piece of the puzzle. China also brought solar-powered desalination systems, turning seawater into fresh water for irrigation. Wind-resistant planting grids were carefully designed to protect young trees from shifting dunes. Drones and satellites monitored soil moisture, plant health, and erosion in real time, allowing precise adjustments across thousands of square kilometers. This approach was data-driven, adaptive, and long-term. Instead of fighting the desert with sheer force, it worked with the desert, using technology to guide nature. For Saudi Arabia, it wasn't just about trees, it was about creating a living, sustainable ecosystem in the world's harshest environment. By early 2025, the results of the Saudi-Chinese partnership began to show. Test zones in the Rub al-Khali, the world's largest sand desert, transformed before everyone's eyes. Once barren dunes now sprouted drought-resistant trees and shrubs, and the soil, strengthened through soilization, held water and nutrients like magic. Local farmers who had watched crops die year after year suddenly saw life returning to their land. Satellite images captured the shift patches of green spreading across sand seas like ink on parchment. The contrast with the failed 2021 initiative was stark. What once wilted under heat now thrived, guided by science, technology, and careful planning. This early success brought more than greenery. It restored hope, showed that the impossible could be done, and proved that ambition paired with expertise can overcome even the harshest natural challenges. Saudi Arabia's green dream was no longer a fantasy. It was starting to become reality. With early successes proving the approach worked, Saudi Arabia and China began expanding the project nationwide. Soilization techniques, desalination-powered irrigation, and wind-resistant planting grids were rolled out across thousands of square kilometers. Carefully selected, drought-resistant tree species were planted in patterns designed to slow desert creep and create microclimates that could eventually support agriculture and wildlife. Monitoring became central to scaling. Satellites, drones, and sensors tracked soil moisture, plant growth, and erosion in real time, allowing teams to make precise adjustments and ensure survival rates far higher than before. This wasn't random planting, it was strategic ecosystem engineering. The long-term vision was ambitious, transform 30% of Saudi Arabia's desertified land into thriving green spaces, restore ecosystems, improve food security, and stabilize local climates. The project became a model for desert regions worldwide, proving that with technology, planning, and cooperation, even the harshest landscapes could be reclaimed. The success of Saudi Arabia's greening project didn't go unnoticed. Satellite images and on-the-ground results made headlines, turning the kingdom into a case study in desert reclamation. At climate summits and international forums, Saudi Arabia was praised for transforming failure into innovation and action. Beyond environmental recognition, the project became a tool for climate diplomacy. Saudi Arabia and China began exporting their desert control knowledge to other nations facing similar crises joint training programs, research centers, and technological exchanges extended their influence across the Middle East and North Africa. What started as a national challenge turned into a global example of strategic cooperation. Local communities also benefited jobs in tree planting, maintenance, and technology-driven irrigation created opportunities, while education programs taught young Saudis to monitor soil and plant health using apps and drones. A failed initiative had become a story of rebirth, influence, and hope, proving that tackling environmental crises can also drive social and diplomatic progress. What once seemed impossible is now unfolding across the deserts of Saudi Arabia.
With science, strategy, and global cooperation, barren sand is transforming into thriving ecosystems. The kingdom's story proves that even the harshest environments can be reclaimed, not by money alone, but by combining innovation, planning, and international partnerships. This isn't just about trees, it's about hope, opportunity, and leadership. Saudi Arabia and China have created a blueprint for survival in a century of climate extremes. Other nations facing desertification now have a model to follow, showing that environmental action can generate jobs, advance technology, and strengthen global ties. And for us, it's a reminder. Climate action isn't just about sacrifice, it's about possibility. If a desert kingdom can grow forests where nothing survived before, imagine what's possible in other parts of the world. If this story inspires you, like, share, and subscribe, and help shine a light on innovations that are actually changing the world. Together we can build a greener future, one tree, one innovation, one partnership at a time.